Today on The Travel Magazine, we'll visit the largest alpine lake in North America, Lake Tahoe. We'll tour the Jewel of the Sierra by paddle boat. Drop by Squaw Valley, the site of the 1960 Winter Olympic Games. Then check out the golfing and other recreation surrounding Squaw Creek. some fun at the Ponderosa Ranch, home of Bonanza. My name is S.J. Kilbert. I'm Whitey Earp. I'm Lulu. Dangerous DJ. Buck Bloodsworth. Curly Joe Pickett. And I'm Sandra Neal. Welcome to this edition of the Travel Magazine. My name is Grizz. I'm the blacksmith here at the Ponderosa Ranch, where the West is still wild. Lake Tahoe is an hour's drive from Reno on the Nevada-California border. One of the deepest lakes in the world, its name comes from the Washoe Indian dialect meaning big water. Surrounded by forested mountains, Tahoe is ideal for year-round recreation. It's a great place for boating, and the 250-kilometer rim trail attracts hikers and cyclists. On the north shore at Incline Village is the world's most famous ranch, the Ponderosa. Who would have predicted that a 600-acre private ranch in North Tahoe would become the site of the most famous TV western of all time? But that's exactly what happened when Hollywood transferred Bill Anderson's ranch into the Ponderosa with a TV show called Bonanza in 1959. Let's go back in time now to the Cartwright days. It was the Wild West just after the Civil War. You've seen Ben, Hoss, and Little Joe here in countless episodes of Bonanza, taking on cattle rustlers, bank robbers, and timber sharks. Today, the ranch welcomes visitors to roam the street and take in the Wild West shows, which include a lot of laughs and gunfire. There's an old-time saloon, gift shops, and a shooting gallery. You can enjoy hay rides, pancake breakfasts, and Hoss burgers or you can ride a horse on some of the trails overlooking the set. So it's really a place for the entire family. Bonanza ran for 14 years and is still popular around the world. It airs in at least a dozen languages. Most of the filming was done right here. And even though the cameras are long gone, everyone working at the ranch really gets into character. And when they dress me up in costume, I felt as if I'd gone back in time too, watching Grizz the blacksmith at work or Lucky Joe panning for gold, made it hard to believe that the Cartwrights hadn't really existed. I'm Lucky Joe, and I teach people here at Ponderosa how to pan for gold. This is the same method used in 1849 in a big gold rush. Basically, it consists of a pan that has some ridges or grooves in it, and you place that pan in the water, making small circles or vibrating motions to wash the gold sand back out of the pan. Now, the gold is heavier than the sand and will always sink into those grooves. As long as you do that, you cannot wash the gold out of this pan and you will wind up with nothing left in your pan but gold, and that's yours to take home. Lucky Joe isn't the only colorful character at the ranch. The streets are the scene of daily gunfight shows, and it looks like a Wild West show is about to begin. The guys you saw serving Hossburgers or taking your picture are also the actors in the show. There are plenty of chances for the audience to get involved too, but you never know who'll get picked out of the crowd. And here comes the sheriff. He's a real crowd pleaser. Howdy, folks! Howdy. Welcome to the Ponderosa. My name is S.J. Kilburn, and I am the sheriff of these here parts. Me and my boy, Whiny, we're here to enforce all the laws. We're looking for the notorious, no good, low down, snake in the grass, skunk, he's got a white streak right down the top of his head, Buck Bloodsworth, and his dirty old gang. And I got his uh, poster there of what he looks like here somewhere. Uh, oh, it's Lulu. She's the town gal. I think I got what you're looking for. Where'd you find that, darling? I left it on the table right next to my ooh, 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 ooh. Folks, this is what he looks like. Little beady-eyed fella. Buck Bloodsworth. He got a little reward there, $10. Anybody happen to see him? Let's see, I need me a deputy here. 
Someone that's brave is not afraid to stand up to this here fella. This, how about you over there, right there? Come over here. Now, I got to swear you in there, Will. So hold that key right there and raise that right hand. That's this one. All right? Repeat after me. I. I. Will. Will. <laughs> not. Not. A little louder. Spit. Spit. In the wind. In the wind. All right. You know who I am? Bloodsworth is the name, the baddest man in these parts. That man right there, that's my partner. Hey, tell him your name. They don't know you want me to know. tell my name? Tell him your name. <laughs> my name is Carly Joe Pickett. Pickett, right. <laughs> no! Sorry, Bucks, I'm not this This little deputy took his role seriously. He gave the bad guys a real run around, much to the delight of the spectators. You guys are gonna go into that bank, get the money. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hurry up. Hey, boss. What? You want us to go into this uh, library bank? Hey. Yeah. Okay. Come on, let's go. What? <laughs> give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. I got the money, I got the money, I got the money, I got. I got the bunny? I've got the bunny? That's what you said. I said money, not bunny. Well, maybe you should get rid of that list. Just hurry up, would you? Oh! Okay, all I gotta do is find myself someone to kiss it and make it all better. <sighs> ma'am, ma'am. Oh. Oh. Could you, could you, right, right there. Oh, 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 look right there. Right there. Oh. visit the site of the 1960 Winter Olympic Games and enjoy some breathtaking trails. Then, it's time to board the MS Dixie for a paddleboat excursion on Lake Tahoe. Yeah, Folks, I'm Buckaroo Boatsway. Don't go away, because when we come back, I'm going to be whipping Sandra, and you don't want to miss that. Nature maker! I done did it. Told you I would. Clean this here town up. My name is Sheriff S.J. Kilburn. Thank you very much, folks. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you. Welcome back to The Travel Magazine and our visit to the Ponderosa Ranch, home of the Bonanza television series. You know, the reason they call me lucky is once I had a man try to jump my claim, he shot first, but I shot straight. Let's get the real story behind the Ponderosa from ranch boss Buck. Buck Bonanza was undoubtedly the most famous Western television series ever. 
but it really wasn't created to promote the country western theme. You were telling me it was to promote Technicolor back in 59? Exactly. Uh, RCA <laughs> was the parent company of NBC, and they wanted to uh, sell their color television sets. Best way to do it, create a television program that looks so great on, on TV that once you saw it on a color TV, you would never, ever watch it in black and white. It became an instant smash hit. And behind us is, of course, the ranch house. The outside of this, the most famous shot probably in all of Bonanza. Most recognizable ranch house in the entire country. I tell you, we can't film anything here because they know it's the Cartwright home. <laughs> well, you look like you could be a Cartwright cousin, and many people thought that there actually was a Cartwright family. Very much so. Uh, David Dotort, who created the show, incredible man, actually responsible for giving Michael Landon his start in, in producing, directing, and writing. Uh, he would bring in historical characters on the show. Mark Twain, Philip Dietermeyer, I could go on and on. People out of Nevada history, out of American history, put them on the show, and they would be here at the same time the Cartwrights would be here, look it up in history, and it would have made a lot of sense. So people come here all the time, see if we have Cartwright records. People with the last name of Cartwright even come here and go, maybe I'm related. <laughs> That's amazing. Should we go in and see if there's any Cartwrights home, or maybe Hop Singh's got something cooking in the kitchen. Buck, this is the actual TV set of the Cartwright home. This is it, and where we're standing right now, this is the famous parlor. How many times did little Joe have to come in here and sit down with Father Ben and discuss one of those problems, usually with a woman with him, and of course the fireplace. Uh, this yeah. is even larger than I imagined. It's massive, even old Dan Blocker, Haas, the gentle giant, was kind of dwarfed by this fireplace. So all the furnishings we see here were in the actual TV show. Exactly. Can't forget this, uh, this massive <laughs> coffee table here. <laughs> You didn't have to worry about theft. You couldn't really hardly budget off that floor. But the entire indoor set was all in one room. You'd think it would have been a whole bunch of different rooms. The office, the dining room, the parlor. Everything. And that's what was kind of deceiving. Not really deceiving so much, but people thought that it was, this house was massive. Well, of course, Ben had all the money in the world. He'd have a massive home. You never got to see this house in its entirety the way we're getting to see it right now. And there wasn't a second floor, so the famous staircases really led to nowhere. To nowhere. <laughs> So just refresh me of the characters. Ben, of course, the patriarch of the Ponderosa Ranch. Wasn't a better cattle baron anywhere. The oldest son, Adam, man in black. And of course, Haas, everyone's favorite, the gentle giant. Big old man, about a little over six foot four. And of course, every woman's favorite, little Joe Cartwright, portrayed by Michael Landon. That's the famous blue chair. That's it, that's Ben's chair. Do you mind if I? Sit oh, he'd, he'd be honored, I'm sure. Oh. Oh, good old Lauren Green. What an amazing actor. There you go. Well, I guess you're in charge of the ranch now. I can hear that tune. On this land we put our brand. How tried is the name. Fortune smile the day we pile the Ponderosa claim. Here in the West, we're living in the best bonanza. If anyone fights any one of us, he's gonna fight with me. Yeah! Howdy, folks! How y'all doing out there today? We're gonna get into the fun stuff, the danger stuff. But in order to do that, I'm gonna need me a volunteer. And normally, what I do is I take someone just right out of the crowd. I do not have shells. But today, we have a special guest. They came from Canada, right? She's gonna come out and give me a hand, put your hand together and make a whole bunch of noise for Sandra! From Travel Magazine. Oh, you're looking good. Ain't she looking good, folks? Yes, yes. They dressed her up just for this. All right, come on over here, Sandra. You're gonna give me a hand. What do I'm gonna have you do? If you would, stand right here and face that direction. Now, what... nothing to be nervous about because you're the world champion, right? I'm the world champion, yeah. <laughs> but. Well, we'll get to talk about that later. <laughs> what we're gonna do, I got a newspaper. What I need you to do, Sandra, is hold the very corner edges of that newspaper, holding that awfully tight, just like that. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get on back here, take this 10-foot bull whip, snap that in half, hopefully not going too deep. <laughs> Eyes open or closed? Well, keep them shut, that way you won't see it coming. So with them short little arms, you wanna hold that as far away from your face as you can. Yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear this bottom piece off so that the wind doesn't blow there. Cause I'm gonna get back there, pop that, keep that good and tight. Are you scared? Yes. 
You should be. <laughs> All righty. Don't worry, though, Sandra. I haven't hit anybody in a long, long time. Okay. Here we go. What, what happens if I hit you? It's going to hurt like hell. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to stand here. I'm going to pop at it a few times to make sure Sandra's not going to move because she had, we did not rehearse this. She had no idea. She has no idea what's going to go on here. So, he, oh, she's, she's holding good, so I'm going to go ahead and take it right down the middle. Huh? <laughs> Give it up. It's a lot harder for it is for me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. How are you, how are you holding up? Not bad. Not good, bad. good. You're not bad because we're going to take it down smaller. I'm wearing a long skirt because my knees are shaking. <laughs> All righty, oh okay. there we go. <laughs> to be a TV host, you gotta have nerves. Boy, she's shaking, folks. I don't know if you can see that. That's okay, though. Just don't move on me. I'm gonna stand here, pop at it, make sure that she's not gonna move before I take her right oh. down. Oh, oh, I got oh. awful close Woo! that time, didn't I? They're sticking out a little bit there. Get it out there straight. I'm gonna tip this hat back just a hair. So I got a little bit of clearance. Keep it out there straight. Get it up straight if you can. It's kind of sagging down. There we go. On three. Get set. One, two, and three. I just lost count for a minute. Thank God she didn't see that. Okay, here we go. On three, get ready, get set, one, two, and I can't believe you're really going to let me do this. <laughs> give me that, folks, yeah. give it up for Sandra from Travel Magazine. Yeah. yeah. We'll return to a much more relaxed pace when we come back as we enjoy a paddle boat ride along Lake Tahoe. Then... We'll take a visit to Squaw Valley, home of the 1960 Winter Olympic Games. In the summertime, the 4,000 acres of Squaw Valley are transformed into mountain biking trails for the intermediate to advanced rider. But don't worry, there are tamer paved trails along the creek. And you can even take a horseback ride along the 18-hole championship golf course. There's plenty more to come from Lake Tahoe, so stay with us. Welcome back to the Travel Magazine. After that nerve-wracking experience at the Ponderosa, I was glad to sit back and enjoy the lake breezes aboard the MS Dixie. Tahoe's largest paddle wheeler departs about four miles north of State Line, Nevada, and cruises beautiful Zephyr Cove and Emerald Bay. This is one of the cleanest lakes you'll ever see. It's said that the water here is 99.7% pure. That's cleaner than the drinking water in most American cities. I didn't drink any of it, but it sure made for a refreshing visit. Not far from the lake, in California, is the famous Squaw Valley Resort, which hosted the 8th Winter Olympic Games back in 1960. In the summertime, the 4,000 acres of Squaw Valley is transformed into mountain biking trails for the intermediate and advanced rider. But don't worry, there are tamer paved trails along the creek. And you can also take a horseback ride around the 18-hole championship golf course. The resort at Squaw Creek features a Robert Trent Jones designed golf course. There are rugged or paved paths for biking. I hopped on my bike for a quick and scenic tour of the grounds. But you can also ride the trails by horseback. Excitement ran high leading up to the 1960 Winter Olympic Games at Squaw Valley. But an opening day snowstorm caused major transportation problems, delaying the arrival of Vice President Richard Nixon who was scheduled to officially open the games. When he finally arrived, the opening ceremonies, orchestrated by Walt Disney, 
got underway. It was a visual and audio extravaganza, including 52 high school bands and the release of 2,000 doves. The temperature was near zero as the athletes lined up, but the sun broke through as the Greek team began the procession. 1952 double gold medalist Andrea Mead Lawrence handed the Olympic torch to speed skater Kenneth Henry, who lit the Olympic flame. American figure skater Carol Heiss became the first woman to take the Olympic oath on behalf of the athletes. Heiss went on to win the gold medal, improving on the silver she'd won in 1956. Her spectacular routine made her the unanimous choice of the judges. The athletes were blessed with sunny skies for the rest of the games, highlighted by the surprising U.S. hockey team's victory. With 1,000 athletes, the largest winter games at that time were a smashing success. Today, Squaw Valley is a four-season resort, but the memory of the 1960 Winter Games is never far away at the Olympic Museum. Right now we're in the Olympic Heritage Museum where you can read all about the accolades that occurred in 1960. We took a trolley, a tram ride to get up here. How many feet above sea level well, are we Well, we now? ride the cable car from our base village, which is Elevation 6200, up here and we're at 8200. So you got 2,000 vertical feet in our cable car. This facility's been here for about 10 to 12 years. We've got an Olympic ice skating pavilion up here, a swimming lagoon and spa access to all of our terrain. Of course, High Camp, which is the, the site where we're on now, didn't exist back no. in 1960. No, it did not. It was uh, just a vision of Alex Cushing, our founder. You don't have to be an Olympian to hit the slopes here. There are more than 4,000 skiable acres on six peaks. We've explored the Tahoe region from its high alpine peaks to its pristine waters and the most popular ranch around. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our show on North Tahoe and our visit to the Ponderosa Ranch. For The Travel Magazine, I'm Sandra Neal. Make sure you join us again as we travel the world. So long, partner. Every single time I hand it to them, they go like this, stab it back in their face. If they're smart, they'll lay it down, never pick it up again. No, you gotta learn the four basic cracks. The first one is what we call circus crack. You're gonna see me use that a lot when we get this show. Get, get it up, get it kicking up. Get into the dangerous stuff, the target work. Then you got your straight cracks over the top, or you can come sidearm, or you can come from underneath. Back over the top of the head, four ways to crack the bullet. My name is Grizz. I'm a blacksmith here at the Ponderosa Ranch. We make dinner bells. We forge horseshoes. We make camping equipment. Over my right shoulder, you'll see little Joe Cartwright. Of course, Michael Landon played little Joe Cartwright. In 1991, Michael Landon passed away, and we had about three helicopters show up here from various major newspapers, along with probably every fan member of Michael Landon's fan club right here at the Ponderosa Ranch. We had a tremendous memorial service in the church. And I'll tell you, the legend of Bonanza surely lives on, not only with the actors that portrayed him, but with the Ponderosa Ranch itself. <laughs>